Quick recap of last week. Line has been closed by BR, has been saved by early preservationists who have saved the track bed between Alsford and Alton and the track itself between Alsford and Rockley, where we're now running regular public services. Rockley has been chosen as the engineering headquarters where we're going to build lots of new sheds because so far everything's been done outside at Alsford, mainly in the cattle dock, which is less than ideal. Part 2. For the first few years, efforts were concentrated on the operational line, but by 1980s, thoughts were turning towards reinstating the track between Ropley and Alton. At a start, about 1.5 miles of second-hand track panels were purchased from Eastleigh. Track was relayed using a pair of powered gantries to lift 60-foot panels from railway wagons and move them forward to the head of steel. Powered by Renault Dauphine engines, they ran on temporary service rails laid 7 feet apart. Moving these service rails forward in the mud was to become a popular pastime for the extension gang. The gantries served us well, and when we had finished with them, they moved on to help lay the first section of the Docklands Light Railway. Track panels were delivered by road to Allsford, where the station forecourt took on the appearance of a permanent way yard. In due course, an enormous ballast heap appeared behind the up platform. Panels were loaded onto flat wagons in the dock siding and then propelled up the line. Diesel Locomotive 1553 was purchased by one of our volunteers to assist with the ballast trains. An English Electric 060, similar to a Class 08 or 11, it was ideally suited to permanent way work. The locomotive can now be found at the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. Medstead station itself had fallen into disrepair and suffered from vandalism, neglect and with the building appearing to have been robbed of building materials. This picture was taken looking from the booking hall through the booking office and into the porter's room, a stark contrast to what you see today. The signal box was demolished by British Railways in 1968 but at least the foundations and the locking room floor remained in situ. A replacement wooden signal box was obtained from Wilton South near Salisbury and craned into position before the track was relayed through the platforms. The running inboards were also still in situ, originally second-hand from Brockenhurst in 1937 when the station was renamed from Medstead to Medstead and Foremarks. Serious work had to be done to improve drainage on the track bed through the station. A new drainage channel was dug and a membrane laid between the platforms. Due to the nature of platforms, it was impossible to use the gantries to lay the rails, so this had to be done by hand. Technology certainly was wonderful, but couldn't always be utilised. Finally, the extension was completed and the station was reopened on Saturday the 28th of May 1983 with U-Class 31806 hauling the first train into Platform 1. Over the following two years, further work was needed to complete the station building, signal box and bring the second platform into use. Focus then turned to the next challenge, rebuilding the longest section of line from Medstead and Foremarks to Alton. Alton Station has three platforms, with the Watercrest Line making use of Platform 3, which was originally created in the mid-1930s for use by the Meon Valley Line trains. Towards the end of the line's early life, in 1967 Platform 2 at Alton was converted to a dead-end bay platform for trains running over the Midhance route. When the line closed, Platform 2 was reconnected at the London end and a buffer stop was placed at the other end before removing most of the track. When the task of relaying the long section began, track panels and ballast were delivered by rail to Alton by BR and were stored in what is now the Meard Loop. Initially the track gantries used for relaying Ropley to Medstead section were employed again for the laying of the track. However, it was found that the relaying task could be carried out a lot more efficiently by using a conventional road crane on the formation. The crane was used to relay most of the track until they reached soap cutting, where due to lack of room, 
the track lane gantries were the only feasible option. To transport the track and ballast up the new line, an 08 shunter was purchased and delivered from Swindon. BR trains would be brought in via the connection, where the shunter would attach to the rear and propel the trains up the line, delivering supplies to the track laying gangs. The shunter found itself in an unusual predicament, not being able to access Ropley until they had finished relaying the line. Certainly enough motivation by anyone's count. Occasionally adverse weather made the job even more challenging, with the winter chill causing the ballast to freeze in the wagons. Once this happened, there was little you could do but wait for it to defrost. Two steam trains were also purchased from Woking and Easley pre-assembly depots, which assisted in loading trap panels onto trains at Alton before they were transported up the line. The trains are still at the railway today, and see occasional use. The section to Alton was reopened on the 25th of May 1985 with the train being hauled by N-Class number 31874, which hauled the railway's first train from Walsford when it reopened, and helped with the relaying of the line. At last, the Watercrest line was complete. This was not the end of a permanent way work in the Medset to Walton section, as once the extension reopened there was still plenty of jobs to do. The installation of the water tower at Alton proved to be an interesting story. Originally based at Aldershot, it was brought to the line in the winter of 1967 and 68. Installation involved digging a 15 foot footing in the embankment, which was then filled with concrete. This was to help support the water tower and avoid it tipping over down the embankment due to its um, top heavy nature. Now while all of this extension was going on, work was still continuing at Ropley overhauling locomotives, including three which arrived in Ropley from Greece in 1984. National Collection Engine 30120 entered service in 1983, before moving to the Swanage Railway in 1991, because it wasn't ideally suited to the Watercrest Line's severe gradients. The whole rebuilding project really went to show just what volunteers can do with the help of a generous public. If you would like to help support the railway during this difficult time, then please visit watercrestline.co.uk forward slash support, or to donate £10 via text, text watercrest to 70085. Thank you so much to everyone who's already donated to us, you really are helping the railway. Now you would be forgiven that for considering we've built the line to its physical limits, there's not really much more we can say. Oh no. See you next week.